Welcome to Aptitude Concept video, Number System. Number System is the basic topic in Quantitative Aptitude and we can say this number system is the backbone of Quantitative Aptitude. So let's discuss various types of number system which we use in the Quantitative Aptitude. So we have four different types of number. This decimal number, binary number, octal number and hexadecimal number. So in general, we represent the decimal number with a base 10. Binary number with a base 2, octal number with a base 8 and hexadecimal number with a base 16. What is in by this base 10, 2, 8 and 16? Base means we have 10 different symbols in decimal. It means in decimal we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. These are the 10 different symbols we use in our decimal number to represent any numbers. In case of binary, we have only two different symbols that is 0 and 1. If you want to represent any number, you have to use either 0 or 1 to represent any number. After, we have eight different symbols that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So we have only eight symbols to represent the number in octal representation. Similarly, in hexadecimal, we have 16 different symbols that start from 0 up to 9 and then we have A, B, C, D, E and F. So totally 16 different symbols are used to represent any hexadecimal number. So that is called base. Base means that much different symbols we are having to represent the given number. 2, 8 and 16 are the base value of binary octal and hexadecimal number. We have different types of numbers. So first one is natural numbers. Natural numbers means usually we represent n and it starts from 1, 2, 3 and goes up. So for whole numbers, it includes 0 plus natural numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3 and goes up to infinity. For integer, we have both negative as well as positive numbers. So the number starts from somewhere and I can say minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2 and 3 goes on. Even numbers means the number should be divisible by 2. It is 2, 4, 6, 8 and goes on. Odd numbers means 1, 3, 5, 7 and goes on. So these are the some basic types of numbers. We have two more types of numbers that we will discuss. So prime number and composite numbers. Prime number means, so before discussing the prime number and composite number, um, we should know what is meant by factors and multiples. Factors means, for example, I am having a number 8. If I divide this number by 1, I don't get any remainder. If I divide this number by 2, I don't get any remainder. If I divide this number by 3, I will get the remainder. So it means that 1 divides 8 perfectly, 2 divides 8 perfectly, 3 is not dividing the 8 perfectly. So if I write check for 4, it divides perfectly, 5 no, 6 no, 7 no and 8 yes. So if a number divides the given number perfectly, then this number is said to be factor of the given number. So factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4 and 8. So let's discuss what is in the multiple. So I am having a number 8, I am multiplying with 1. Similarly, I am having multiplying with 2, 3, up to 4 and goes on. So the answer is 8, 16, 24 and 32. So it means 8 is the multiple of 8, 16 is the multiple of 8, 24 is the multiple of 8, 32 is the multiple of 8 and goes on. So in other way we can say 8 is the factor of 8, 8 is the factor of 16, 8 is the factor of 24, 8 is the factor of 32. So this is the concept of multiple and the factor. In this example itself, we can say 8 is the multiple of 1, 2, 4 and 8. Or we can say 1, 2, 4 and 8 is the factors of 8. So, if you want to understand the prime number and composite number, you should know clearly about factors and multiples. Now, let's discuss what is in the prime numbers. So, consider we have discussed with the number 8. So, 8 having 1, 2, 4 and 8 as a factors. Take the number 7 and check. 
So if you divide this number 7 by 1, we don't get any number, any remainder. Divide this number by 1 as it will divide. So 2, no, 3, no, 4, no, 5, 6 and only 7. So we have only two factors for the given number 7. It means 1 and 7 are the factors of 7. Similarly, if you take some other number like 5, you will get 1 and 5 only. You don't get any other factors. So in the previous case, we have 4 factors. But in this case, we have only 2 factors. It means 1 and 7, 1 and 5. That is, factor of 7 is 1 and 7, factor of 5 is 1 and 5. It means, prime number means the number which have only 2 factors and the factors are 1 and the number itself. So if any number is having only 2 factors and the 2 factors are 1 and the number itself, then we say the given number is a prime number. So apart from this prime number, the remaining numbers are composite numbers. Make sure 1 is neither prime nor composite number. The prime number starts from 2 and the composite number starts from 4 only. So 1 is neither prime nor composite number. So in general, we represent a fraction in 3 different types. So for example, I am writing a fraction 1 by 2 or 3 by 4, 5 by 6. So it means, the proper fraction means the numerator value is lower than the denominator. So in all the cases, numerator is lower than the denominator. So 3 is less than 4, 5 is less than 6. So if you get a fraction like this, then that is called proper fraction. Improper fraction means the numerator value will, value will be higher than the denominator. For example, 13 by 10 is an improper fraction. 15 by 13 is an improper fraction. So if numerator value is more than the denominator, then that is called the improper fraction. So what is in the mixed fraction? Mixed fraction have an integer plus fraction like this. So not an addition. So for example, I am having a number 3 by 10. So 13 by 10, it means I have to divide this 13 by 10. I will get 1 and the remainder 3 by 10. So mixed fraction can be represented with an integer followed by a fraction. So I can write this number as 1, 2 by 13. So an integer followed by a fraction is called a mixed fraction. We can convert improper fraction to a mixed fraction at any time. So 15 by 13 can be converted to mixed fraction or this mixed fraction can be converted to improper fraction. So 13 into 1 plus 2. 13 into 1 plus 2. So you will get 15 by 13. So these are the three representation of fraction we use in our quantitative attitude. So understand this concept, we will discuss the problems in the next concept video. Thank you.